You would probably never guess, but level designing is actually a pretty difficult task. <laughs> Who would have guessed, right? I've been saying this thing so many times in my recent videos, so I'm just kind of like mimicking myself at this point. But basically in this video, we're gonna share some tips and tricks for doing level design in Unity, especially Unity 2019.2, because that's the latest version, which was released yesterday. At any point during this video, if you guys feel like you have any questions or you wanna ask something or even have any suggestions on what I should do next, next, feel free to let us know in the comment section and you should also join our Discord server where we have over 10,000 like-minded game developers who all love to share their projects, share some tips and tricks of their own, and basically we're a community of like-minded people who love to help other people out. So if you want to join our community, make sure to go to the link in the description box of this video. Alright, so I'm basically going to get Unity going and then share some really valuable tips and tricks for level designing in Unity, which I found very crucial in my own experience experience. You won't be necessarily needed to follow along, so you can just feel free to watch and either learn and memorize what I say or follow along as well, so that's completely up to you. But first, this video is brought to you by Pinwheel Studio. Pinwheel Studio are the creators of Polaris version 2, ultimate low-poly terrain engine. Polaris is a user-friendly low-poly terrain engine dedicated to help you creating gorgeous, large-scale, stylized, and flat-shaded landscapes that run well on both mobile and desktop applications, saving you a lot of time and effort. It's super easy to learn, GPU accelerated to perform tasks on GPU side which consume less memory and provide smoother experience, and modern and easy to use toolbox that is included in the package, massive foliage rendering, and so many more features that are also listed on the asset store page, which is linked in the description. It supports the lightweight render pipeline and support for HDRP is also coming soon. If you're making games in Unity, make sure to check out Polaris via the link in the description box of this video. All right, folks, time for level design. First and foremost, you've probably already heard of the popular Unity tool, Polybrush. It's an in-editor level design tool that helps you make environments. And now with Unity 2019.2, which was released yesterday once again, it's been updated with a prefab scatter mode. The prefab scatter mode allows you to paint prefabs like vegetation on top of other game objects. You can get yourself into the prefab scatter mode via the polybrush window and add in your prefabs to start painting. You also have a bunch of settings like brush size and how many objects you want to paint and the rotations. It's also worth mentioning that Polybrush is a package for Unity, which means that you have to import it into your project. So if you don't see the Polybrush window, that's probably why. Moving on, the terrain system was upgraded back in Unity 2018.3, which I also have a video on. And now there's an addition on top of those updates where we now have a bunch of new brushes, sculpting tools, and a whole new terrain workflow. The terrain tools package, which is available in preview in the package manager, introduces these updates. The new brushes work like terrain stamps, making small or large scale terrain formations with literally just a few clicks. There are also new sculpting tools like noise sculpting, allowing you to sculpt the terrain with a noise texture that works like an overlay, which you can modify in size and position. The new terrain workflow is basically a new window called Terrain Toolbox, allowing you to create a terrain with predefined settings, create and use presets, and create the terrain through there. Tip number three, if you're making a 2D game, you might want to chime into using the lightweight render pipeline. The reason I'm saying this is because of the new 2D lights and the 2D renderer in general. Renderer. <laughs> lightweight render pipeline is one of Unity's new rendering templates, which works really well for mobile games. It is more lightweight. Oh, you don't say something. Don't you dare. Think that way. The problem that we struggled with was that when we were making 2D games, we were pretty much adding 3D lights to a 2D world. Now though, we have 2D lights, which introduces a bunch of different and new light sources for 2D worlds and makes it more performant. Also, you probably realize that I'm kind of quick about these things because I'm going to link them all in the description box of this video so you can find a full manual, aka like a guide or maybe even my tutorial. Why not watch it, right, while you're here? But yeah, I'm basically not going way too deep into the features individually because I don't want to make this video 30 minutes long because I know you guys don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> Moving on, number four, using global illumination is super, super crucial for receiving realistic lights. 
I actually have a full video on global illumination, which I'm going to link in the description, just like I said before. So I won't really go about this for long. Global illumination or GI basically improves the indirect light intensity and quality in your scenes. That way you receive better and more realistic colors and light intensity, as well as a better amount of environment lighting in your scenes. You can enable real-time global illumination in the lighting window. And now number five, a trick that I've been using more and more has been to add multiple light sources into my scene instead of only one. Whoa, what a useful tip, Sam. I swear to God, if you keep thinking this way, I'm gonna stop being so polite. While making levels, I found that real-time GI or global illumination that we just talked about to be very useful and ambient lighting is super as well. But sometimes the light hitting the shadows and darker spots in your scenes is just not enough. When this happens, I create an additional direction light and set it to only affect a specific layer of objects. That way I can exclude objects like my terrain to avoid making it too light and only make it affect the objects that are darker. You basically gotta light those scenes up. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I see a lot of people making the same mistake that I was making for like, I don't know, three years ago, two years ago, maybe even. Um, so I, I feel like this is very useful for people that are just getting started, but also intermediate level designers who just want to improve the lighting in their scenes. Cool. So those are some of my most crucial tips for making levels in Unity 2019.2. I honestly find the first tip the most valuable if you ask me because I've always had to use the like third party assets from the asset store for the lack of painting prefabs onto objects like your terrains. So having an officially integrated feature to do that is just so beautiful. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more tips and tricks videos like this one, by the way, because I've been really enjoying making these lately and I feel like they're great for quick lessons, which is also something that I'm trying to integrate into the channel where I make these longer tutorial videos that are, you know, your, your general common type of tutorial video, but also these quick videos where I just share my experiences, share some tips and tricks that can be valuable and will be valuable to you so that you just have all the information you need need. I also want to know though, do you feel like I'm sharing some really valuable tips? Because I feel like I am, but if you think these are like very basic or if you feel like these are very, you know, advanced for you, let me know in the comments because I want to get a better idea of what you feel like is very valuable and what you feel like is a little bit less valuable. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe to stay updated for new videos. You should also turn on the bell icon to get notifications for whenever I upload something new. We we also have a Discord server with almost 15,000 members now, which is still insane and blows my mind to say. And in there, we're basically a bunch of like-minded game developers, modelers, artists, and so on. So if you want to be a part of that, a massive helpful community of incredible people basically, make sure to join using the link on the screen right now or the link in the description below. I would also like to give a huge shout out to our Patreons, Cupola, Infinity PBR, Flu Joey, Academy of Games.com, Sebastian Vaggy, Glasswell Entertainment, Couch Ferret, Tim Gunn, and Stephen Eddy. So with that being said, I'm gonna be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So if you've got any questions or any other you know, tips for level designing, let us know. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the comments and in our Discord. So see you guys there, have a good night and peace out.